I was gonna say moving to P three on the podium. Lando, yeah, on the podium, not winning. No, he has officially set the Formula One record for most podiums without a win. This is his fourteenth. Um, yeah, he 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 broke that record. But you know, I think he was happy that his his bestie um, won the race after yeah. you know freaking appendicitis. They, they you know the every time we get a, a moment of Carlos and Lando just you know being best friends, it's very nice to, to still be able to see that. I um, do miss them as teammates. I will say that. Yeah, that's them. that's true. But the real question here is. Because at the beginning of the race, McLaren did a little bit of, of team orders to put Lando ahead of Oscar. Um, was that the right call? I think so. Just because the what I was seeing coming over the radio from Piastri and his tire tag was worse than Lando's, I think they knew his car was set up a little bit differently or whatever. And, it, or mm-hmm. he just wasn't managing his tires well enough, whatever the circumstances, I think they did the best for the team performance. I I agree. And even if Oscar did get on the podium, I still wouldn't have gotten the points because the rest of our podiums were completely torpedoed by the Max's DNF. Um, but yeah, I know that a lot of people weren't happy about it. Cause you know, obviously it was Oscar's home race. It would have been great to see an Australian yeah. on, on the podium, but Lando was just running better. Right. At the end of the day, this is a high performance sport with professional athletes trying to score points for a team. Yeah. Don't care what city we're in. Don't care whose home race it is. Whose home race it is. That's not how professional sports teams operate. Right. And it's for the better of the team. And this is the call they had to make. Like, I don't, I mean, yes, obviously it would have been great for him to be on the podium in Australia, but like, that's not how this works. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes. We've seen moments where Lando has outperformed Oscar. We've seen moments where Oscar has outperformed Lando between last year. And yes, the season is only three races long, um, but we've seen a little bit of both from both drivers. I think right now McLaren is focusing on the, they had the best opportunity to have the most success in P3 and P4. um, And they, I think are ahead of schedule for where they expected to be by the time we got to Australia based on kind of the things that they were saying, you know, in tests, Staying and leading into the opening races of the season. I know we're still in the opening races, but yes. I'm going to say yes and no. Like, what people say before the season starts, Yeah, a thousand grains of salt. Like, give me a ton of salt and then I'll believe you. But I think a little bit of what people say preseason has some truth to it. Do I think they, you know, they were thinking they would be in P3 of the Constructors after Australia, probably not considering yeah. how their first three races went last year. Um, but they've definitely made strides since last year. I, th- I mean, we've both said we want Lando to win a race this year. Obviously, I think, unfortunately, his record is just going to keep increasing. Um, yeah. But he's getting points. He's scoring points. And you can't be upset about that when you have Ferrari and you have Red Bull. Yeah, it's... Driving. It's so hard to get your car if you're not a Red Bull or a McLaren into those podium positions into that top four. So the fact that both McLarens were able to do that, that's, you know, I know that everybody wanted to see Oscar, you know, have a great race. Oscar had a great race. He finished off the podium. That's not the best part of it, but it was still a great race. And McLaren definitely made the right decision. Exactly. 100%. 